Shalom, 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 Israel. Once again, you're not under the sounds of the voice of um, Tazadak and Eleazar. Yeah, Kahan Eleazar, Kahan Tazadak. Um, what we're going to give you now is, you know, um, through the spirit of Yahweh Barisham, Yahweh Shah. You know, I hope you received this message from the spirit that is given. This is actually not to attack anyone, but it's to bring forth truth. Because, Brother Eliezer, there's a lot of people out here professing to be of the spirit of the Most High in Christ, but they're coming through the spirit of Satan. And in particularly, you know, there's a lot of women out there. I'm not sure if you crossed any um, women that, you know, claim to, you know, think that they're of the Most High. But these same women, they're not dressing appropriately. Um, they're not covered as, you know, ordered in the scriptures. Um, these women, you know, they carry around these crystals, which invoke other spirits. And the scriptures clearly tell us that any spirit that's not of the Most High is of the devil, is of Satan. So, I mean, we're going to address some of these issues um, today. Um, we're going to go into scriptures, and we're going to let the scriptures speak for themselves, you know. So, you know, there's sisters out there. I don't know about you, brother. Some sisters, and you may have run into some of these sisters that carry the crystals around, you know, which actually, you know, carries another um, energy. And if you know anything about these crystals, these women that deal with these crystals or these, you know, if you um, go to a lot of these people that's likely holistic, you know, a lot of these women that work in these places, they're witches. And they try and tell you that they're good witches. But we're going to show you according to the scriptures, there's no such thing as a good witch, man. That is of the spirit of Satan. That is of the spirit of the devil. You know, that's that's darkness. So, you know, all of you, you know, you sisters that's actually caught up into that, um, you need to stop it. You need to stop it now. Khan, Shalom, Yashala. Um, yeah, I've, I've seen what, what the brother is talking about. I see it a lot. And, um, it's, it's a pattern, you know, you, you meet certain sisters and you be wondering, you know, what's, what's going on with the sister. And then out of nowhere, she go into some type of, uh, mysticism, you know, she explains she got crystals or she's doing this ritual. And or she got some kind of power in her hand. Right? She you know, touch certain hands and all that. Yeah, you know, some of them will tell you they can read your minds. Right, they want to yeah. <laughs> yeah, read your palms. And the, the number one favorite, Zodiac signs. Right, 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 right. Zodiac signs. Oh, these sisters love and see the 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 problem is, you know, oftentimes that's taught from the parents. And the parents don't think nothing of it. They just think it's just, just fun and games, you know. Just, you know, isn't this funny? You know, look, the little magic trick. And they getting them into some serious stuff that they don't really know what they're doing. And they grow up thinking that this is okay. We talking about people who profess they are Christians. You know, this is why I see a lot of a lot of a lot of people who have parents who say I'm Christian. I was raised Christians. They're deep into the zodiac signs. They will tell you what your personality is supposed to be. They will tell you. They'll ask you your birth date, which is a trap a lot of the time. That's why I don't I don't give out my birth date because you trying to pull me into some vanity. You see what I'm saying? Like, I don't want to walk down this road with you, but you trying to force me down this road by taking the information I'm giving you and making something out of it that is not. And you try to feed it to me. The scriptures talk about being possessors, good possessors of your vessel. You see what I'm saying? You got the choice. You and you in this body, your soul inhabits this body. You are the one making the choices. It's not no sign telling you to be prideful. It's not no sign telling you to be evil. It's not no sign telling you to have split personality. That's everything that's going on in you and what you choose to let happen to you. You know, you got to demonstrate some form of self-control and you got to 
take some type of accountability and responsibility. And that's why I don't I don't I don't lean hard on on these things that they're they're going into because some people just talk about it, you know, and they joke around it. But then you got some people that are put their whole life around um, these signs and symbols. They'll say, I got to sleep this way, and then I got to have this in my room to match up with my symbol. And they don't realize all of that is a, a lifestyle of a witch. They don't even realize that's what it is. That's a that's a practice. When you look at these people practicing the dark arts, it ain't just no costume. These people live in that thing. Just like how you got real people trying to live for the most high. And you see their life change. And you see they do things a certain way and say things a certain way. That's the same thing for these real witches. So people are... are, are Practicing witchcraft in ignorance. A lot of them is ignorant. Some of them think it's not that serious. Some of them think that it is not real. But the scriptures tell you about demons. It tell you about unclean spirits. So these spirits, these unclean spirits and these other forces and powers, they're out there. But you're not supposed to partake in them because it's always going to end in your demise. And as the most high creator, that is the one that we should serve. Con, con. So let, let's start off, brother, um, with, you know, dealing with, you know, marriage. Um, let's go into, you know, marriage, like what actually constitute marriage according to the most high, not according to this wall, not according to this man's wall, not according to the church, not according to TD Snakes, not according to Clef Hole Dollar, not according to none of these people, man, but according to the most high and the Bible. What constitute marriage? And we're going to see that if a woman goes out and spreads her quiver and gives it to a man, is she obligated to be with that man? Or can she just, because I don't know if you're aware, but 80% of divorces are actually filed by women. 80% of divorces are filed by women. So can she just actually divorce a man and then go have sex with another man and another man? Because according to the Bible, once a man has actually come to you in the truth and taught you, sister, that according to the Bible, if you have sex with a man, you're not supposed to go out and sleep with any other man until that man is dead. It's dead. Every time you do, you are a hoe. You are a hoe, according to the Most High. Now, we, I need you to take out your pens and papers because we're going to go through some scriptures that they're not teaching you in your churches. And sisters, don't get in your feelings. Don't get in your emotions. This is your salvation. What are we giving you? Right knowledge and truth. So the first, I'm going to see, let, let's look in the Bible and see what constitutes marriage. Now, when we look in the book of um, Exodus, 22 verse 16 it says if a man entice a maid you know a young woman a maid that is not bethrall means she's not engaged and he lie with her that means have sex with her he shall surely endow her to be his wife now according to this they're not actually married right there the man is supposed to endow her to be his wife meaning he's supposed to take a contract brother Eleazar and say hey you're my wife now, and you draw up this contract. Now, let's see if we could find that anywhere in the scriptures where it says that. We're going to go over to the book of Tobit, the seventh chapter, and we're going to read verse 13 and 14. The book of Tobit. Then, I'm reading from the book of Tobit, the seventh chapter, verse 13 and 14. Then he called his daughter, Sarah, and she came to her father, and he took her by the hand and gave her to be wife to Tobias, saying, Behold, take her after the law of Moses, after the law of Moses, and lead her away to thy father and be blessed them. And he blessed them and called Edna his wife and took papers. You see right there, Brother Eliezer, that's the contract right there. And took papers, that's the marital contract. So now, backing up Exodus 22 and 16, he's supposed to endow her to be his wife. He's supposed to construct papers. And took papers and did write an instrument of covenants. The word covenant means contract. 
and sealed it. And they put their seals on it. How did he seal? With that thumbprint. That's the most powerful seal that you could have. So you can see right here, sisters, you're not supposed to be just sleeping around with Tom, Dick, and Harry, and so on and so forth. Now, backing up with the brother Eliezer said, let's go to 1 Corinthians, the seventh chapter, and I'm going to get verse 10 and 11. Now, let's see if you could just put your husband away. I mean, because sister, if you divorce your husband, are you supposed to go out and have sex with another man? Because that's what a lot of them like to do, Eliezer. They don't think nothing of it. That They'll divorce their husband, then they'll go out, have sex with another man, and think it's okay. But then they have frowned upon, um, you know, polyg polygamy. They'll tell you polygamy is wrong. But what are they doing? They're prostituting themselves. So 1 Corinthians, the 7th chapter, verse 10. And unto the Mary, I command, yet not I, but the Lord. So there I go to Brother Paul. He's saying, Yahweh Shah is commanding you this. Let not the wife depart from her husband. Point blank, period. You're not supposed to be divorcing your husband, sis. You're supposed to check him out before you get with him. The only, the only thing that Christ gives to justify this is idolatry and fornication. Sexual wickedness. And if that Negro starts worshiping another God, that's not the most high. Verse 11. But if she departs, let's see what happens if she departs, Brother Eleazar. Let her remain unmarried. Sister, you're not supposed to be taking another man. If you take another man, if you divorce your husband, or if you go back home to your mother's house or your father's house, you take another man, according to this Bible, you are a hoe. You are a hoe. There's no way around it. Now, your preacher's not going to teach you this. Your, your deacon's not going to teach you this because they're not of the most high. If you're going to church right now, um, sister, you need to um, go in, talk to your preacher, and tell him to turn that ch church over to an Israelite congregation so that you can learn the truth. Not just any Israelite, but the ones that's teaching, thus saith the Lord. But if she departs, let her remain unmarried and, or be reconciled to her husband. So if you get your mind right, sis, you could go back to your husband. But if you've been defiled, he can't take you back. He can't take you back. And let not the husband put away his wife. So the brother, you're not supposed to just put him away for any reason. We'll get one more scripture. Um, what else I got here? Romans, the seventh chapter, verse two and three. Let's see if we can find that again. Book of Romans, the seventh chapter, verse two and three. For the woman which have a husband is bound by the law. So this is, this is going back to the Old Testament. It says bound by the law to her husband so as long as he liveth. But if the husband be dead, she's loose from the law of her husband. So then, if while her husband liveth, she be married to another man, she shall be called an adulteress. What's the punishment for adultery, Eliezer? Death. The punishment for adultery is what? Death. Death. So you shall be called an adulteress. Are adulteresses allowed in the kingdom of heaven, Brother Eliezer? Nope. La'ah. La'ah. You, you got to repent. And you can't, don't just think you could go out and commit adultery because remember when Mary Magdalene was caught in the act of adultery when they was about to stone her, Yahweh Christ said, listen, you know, these, these people are right. Basically, he was saying these people are right. You're supposed to be put to death, but this is where the mercy of Yahweh comes in. He said, go thy way, woman, and sin no more. Meaning if she sin again, as she was caught into the act again, judgment is going to come down upon her. Uh, all right. In um, 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 9, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of the Most High? Be not deceived, neither fornicator nor adulterer, or uh, idolater, or adulterer, nor effeminate, nor abuser of themselves with mankind, nor thief, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkard, so the drinkers, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of the Most High. So, in the next verse, verse eleven, it says, "And such were some of you." So. 
these people he's writing to, they used to practice right. these things. Right. But ye are washed, but ye are sanctified. You set apart, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Yahawashah and by the spirit of the Most High. See, the spirit changed them. They let the spirit work on their hearts and remove that stony heart uh, the world gives you to, to, to have no conscience, to, to love evil, to do evil to each other and yourself. Because the scriptures talk about how fornication hurt you. It said you, you wrong if your own body. Right. So you hurting yourself when you're doing that. So the, the spirit will take that out of you. And make you conscious of what you're doing to yourself and the people around you. And you'll stop practicing all these things. This whole list that I just read, all these are unrighteousness. And people that's stuck in them cannot inherit the kingdom of the Most High. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to get more and more scripture on this. So sisters, you know, I hope you're listening. Um, you can take this offen offensively all you want. But it's not going to ch change the judgments of the Most High. And you can try and tap dance and make the scriptures say something that they're not saying. But we're reading this verbatim. We're, we're not interpreting anything. This right here is crystal clear. Um, 1 Corinthians, the 7th chapter, verse 39 says, The wife is bound by the law as long as her husband liveth. But if the husband be dead, she is at liberty to be married to whom she will. Only in the Lord. Meaning that person has to be in the Lord also. He has to be a believer. So sis, if you have laid down, especially you sisters in the truth, you know better. Or, you, you sister, you don't have to be in the truth. If you've gotten with an Israelite man and he's told you, listen, I went into you. You can't go out and sleep with anyone else. This is according to the Bible. He's not making that up. So how can you say that you're with the Most High if you're disobeying that? How do Dare you think the spirit of the Most High is on you? If you went out, you gave yourself, because we went into it scientifically the last time, how when a man lays down with you, his DNA is going up in you. That, that man is pouring out his spirit on you. So, I mean, when you get all these different spirits on you, this is why you'd be so bugged out of your mind, sis. What you got, huh? Yeah, it, it'd be a lot of sisters that, that um... They say they serve in the Most High, and they say they're very close to God. But then you'll see them into a lot of divinations, you know, and witchcraft and, and sorceries, and they they don't see the contradiction in that. But in Romans chapter 10, I'm going to read chapter 10, verse 1 through 3. It says, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to the most high for Israel is that they might be saved. So this is what we hoping for while we talking to y'all. We hoping that something in these scriptures inspires something greater in you. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Who's in the world? Satan. Mm -hmm. It says, for I bear them record that they have a zeal of the most high. So these women, they're saying, yeah, I got God. I got God. And they all excited, right? They have a zeal. It said, but not according to knowledge, but it's not according to the scriptures. See, they want to get with, with the most high on their own terms. You see what I'm saying? For they being ignorant of the most high's righteousness, they being ignorant of what the most high say is right and wrong. They have no idea what them commandments is saying about what they're doing. They're going off their feelings and their zeal. And it, it, another scripture says it's not good to have zeal without knowledge. It says, and going and going about to establish their own righteousness. Now you're going to decide for yourself uh, uh, um, what is right and what is wrong. And it doesn't matter what the scriptures say. You feel this energy and this power. You may very well be, but it ain't the energy and the power of the most high. So it's a demon have not submitted themselves to the righteousness of the Most High. You ain't submit to the laws of the Most High. So I just wanted to get that out real quick. Yeah, so, you know, another thing I wanted to bring out, brother, you know, um, there's a lot of sisters that, you know, seem to think that they're qualified to teach men. 
you know, um, you know, a lot of sisters say, oh, I'm a prophetess, a prophetess. And they always want to claim Deborah. They always want to claim Deborah when there was a time that the Israelite men were so weak that, you know, she was under the tree, like prophesying. And, you know, so, right, right. So, you know, the first thing I want to say is that sisters, you have to learn to control your emotions. You have to learn to control your mouth. There's a lot of sisters, brother, if you try to correct them, they call you names. Oh, you're, um, you're a jerk. Um, you're, um, too controlling. Um, you know, even if you're trying to give them corrected criticism, according to thus saith the Lord, they get into the emotions and they totally lose control and they disrespect their man or their husband. The scripture saying, um, first Corinthians, um, 14 verse 40 it says let all things be done in decency and, and in order now, now let's see um if a woman is supposed to be teaching the men or sisters because a lot of these sisters say oh god give me all of this power and what i'm not supposed to use it yeah you can use it you could teach in your home your your sons and your daughters and other women you're not supposed to be teaching a man it's, it's certainly it shouldn't even be in a woman's spirit to want to be the, your man's leader. Con. Con. Be want to be in your spirit. Con. Your spirit should be. I want to follow this man. That's right. I want to be his help. I want to be his helpmate. You see what I'm saying? That's what she was designed for. Not. Not. That's what he was. Just, yes. And and when you hear these women who come with these titles, notice they constantly come in with these titles. There's a reason for all of this. Nobody asked them about their title, but they tell you their title. Well, why are they doing that? They're trying to establish that they have the right to change what God says. Because they know you're going to read the Bible, and when you read the verse, they're going to throw at you their title. Well, I'm a prophetess. Didn't you hear me the first time? That's not the spirit of a prophetess. The scripture says in Proverbs 20 and 6 it says most men proclaim everyone his own goodness but a faithful man who can find so the righteous ain't gonna be running around bragging about hey i'm a this and i'm a that they're gonna be doing the work in proverbs 27 and 2 it said let another man praise thee not thy own mouth a stranger not thy own lips so when I see sisters come like that, because brothers do this also, but right now we focus it on the sisters. When we see sisters do this, I know something crazy. She about to say something crazy off the walls. You know, she about to go into the divination. She's about to go into how it's okay for her to have authority over her man. Well, why is this? Well, I'm, I'm Miss Prophetess, and I have all these titles. And if they don't come with the titles, they're going to come with the dreams. I know you heard these things. Oh, yeah. They're going to come with the dreams. Yep. They're going to say they have, you know, the prophetic gift. And guess what? There's, a scriptures, there's scriptures for everything. So there's scriptures concerning that. There's scriptures talking about how people running after these dreams in Sirach or Ecclesiasticus of the Apocrypha. In Sirach 34, it said a hope in verse 1, the hope of a man void of understanding are vain and false and dreams lift up fools. Whosoever regard his dream is like him that catcheth a shadow and followeth after the wind. The vision of dreams is the resemblance of one thing to another, even as the likeness of a face to a face of an unclean thing. What can be cleansed? That's what I was talking about the other day. Of an unclean thing, what can be cleansed? Because they'll be taking the witchcraft and the Most High said, that's unclean. Leave it alone. But they'll try to make it clean. Well, it's, it's working for me, so it's clean. No. It said, of an unclean thing, what can be cleaned? It said, from that, from, from, from that thing which is false, what can be, what truth can come? So they're trying to take this falsehood and make it true. Divinitions and smooth saying, you see how I put it all together? And dreams are vain. 
So these definitions, these smooth saying, because some people want to pray to dead people. Close, they smooth, close, close. They, you see what I'm saying? Necromancy. It says, and the heart fancy if, it said, as a woman's heart in travail. It said, if they be not from the most high in thy visitation, set not thy heart upon it. It says, for the dreams, for dreams have deceived many. It says, and they have failed that put their trust in them. The law shall be found perfect without lies. And, and the wisdom, and wisdom is perfection to a faithful mouth. So this is saying, those dreams, those smooth saying, put that to the law of the Most High. The law of the Most High going to reveal all of that nonsense. It's going to say, this is a lie. This is true. This ain't going to work. This going to work. That's what the law of the Most High is going to do. It's going to give you order and structure of the Most High. It's going to tell you to leave that divination alone. It's going to tell you to leave the, the smooth saying alone. So go ahead, brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, basically, yeah, just um, let me back in on what the brother says. You know, sisters, um, many of you, you have a tendency, oh, yeah, I can see things. I had a dream about this. And if you, I mean, if you look at the dreams um, are in the Bible, there's never been a dream that someone had and the exact event of the dream actually took place. Mm -hmm. The dream always requires an interpretation. Yeah, when, it, when it's um, from the Most High. It's all symbolic to something else. You never, um, it never happens exactly how you dream it. So if you are a true interpretative dream, what you're dreaming is actually not what's going to happen. It's going to be something else. But I want to say this, you know, 1 Corinthians um, 14 and 34 says, let your women keep silence in the churches. Why do we have women preachers? Justify having a woman preacher when the Bible is saying, let your women keep silent in the churches for it's not permitted to them to speak. Shh, be quiet, sisters. It's not permitted for them to speak. But they are commanded. This is a commandment. But they are commanded to be under obedience. Mm -hmm. To be, most sisters can't handle that up. Oh. Especially with the feminists of today. As also saith the law. Huh. It's going back to the Old Testament. Huh. And if they will learn anything. Is another man supposed to be teaching your rabbi? Nope. Not without your permission. And if they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home home so all of you sisters is going on the internet your husband's trying to teach you he's a righteous israelite man the the man's trying to teach you you over here you watching this you watching that camp and then you come back and your mind's all discombobulated because now you don't know what to believe because you're listening to all of these different doctrines when the scriptures is telling you what you're supposed to do let them learn from their husband at home but let's get um first Timothy. So let me get um first Timothy's two verse eleven. You got a you got a scripture for that? Yeah, I got I'm a priest out there real quick. Um you're supposed to learn from your husbands at home. Um you know, you supposed to run run whatever whoever you um trying to learn from you supposed to run that to your your head and see if he checked that off because that might be somebody that he learned under and he said oh yeah he you know he's a great teacher you can go ahead and learn because he knows what's coming on your plate he knows what you because he already ate it but um if you're just going out there doing what you're doing what you see this is how the problem started in the garden she went to another messenger and received the wrong message, yeah. and brought it to the and brought it to the husband, <laughs> and he received it, and now here we are today. So when you look at Ephesians chapter five, I'm gonna start at um twenty three. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. Yeah, uh-huh yeah. and he is the savior of the body therefore as the church is subject unto christ so let the wives be subject to their own husbands in everything husbands love your wives everything. yep in everything 
Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might, watch this, that he might sanctify, that means to separate, and cleanse it, meaning get rid of all them sins, and cleanse it with the washing of the word, of, with the washing of water by the word. Now, this is, now the husband is to mimic what Christ did with the church to cleanse it with the washing of the word. So the husband's job is to give you that word to cleanse you. That he might present to himself a glorious church. Not having spot, wrinkle, or any such thing. But that it should be holy, meaning set apart. And without blemish. So this is the uh, husband's job. The husband's job is to educate his wife in the words of the Most High. And teach her and show her by example how to live according to the Torah. According to the walk of the Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai. Go ahead, brother. Yeah, so I'm, you know, I'm just continue on about, you know, the women not actually teaching in the churches and they're supposed to learn from their husbands at home. We look at the book of first Timothy two verse 11. It says, let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. Who she subjected to? She subjected to her husband. If he's a righteous God fearing man. Um, but I suffer not a woman to teach nor usurp authority over the man. So why do we have these women out here in society teaching um, men, brother? Is that righteous? Is that according to the most high? No, it's not. And feminists will not be able to accept that. I mean, we understand that. Feminists, you're not going to get this. And this is why you're not going to enter the glorious kingdom, man. You're not going to enter the glorious kingdom with that spirit. I'm the problem is, a lot of them have this idea that, well, it's a lot of us women who feel this way. And since there's a lot of us women who feel this way, it must be right. Because there's so many of us. Well, the scripture says in Matthew 7, the scripture says in Matthew 7 and 13, Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat. So you following because there's so many people in it, that's the road to destruction. When you clearly see you're going against the Torah, you're going against the laws of the Most High, and your only justification is everybody can't be wrong. Um, yes, they can. They under the same uh, uh, um, Babylonian system that taught them that right is wrong and wrong is right because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life and few be there that find it and you and if you notice shout out to the righteous sisters because there are a few we reading about it right now it said few be that find it it ain't said none be that be find it it said a few so there's a few so the majority of the sisters you're gonna bump into they're not gonna be the few it's gonna be a few sisters you're gonna be able to really connect with you righteous sisters and and deal with and the rest of them you're gonna have to keep your eye on them because they're going to be for this system and they're going to be a part of that that gate. And they're going to be the ones trying to tell you about their numbers. They're going to be the ones to say, well, it's just a few of you guys. You know, it's a lot of us. Everybody can't be wrong. When well, you remember what the scriptures say and the spirit going to let you know that them people is lying to you. Well, go ahead, brother. Yeah, con, con. Yeah, man. But I mean, the problem with that, brother, is there, you know, there's a lot of weak Negroes out here. And, you know, if the woman is very attractive, um, you know, she got a nice body. The the scriptures just goes out of the window with that weak nigga, well. Yeah. You know, and then, you know, she, you know, throw that, you know, the JJ on him. And he's at laws. He, he just, he be bugged out of his damn mind because he's carnal. Because he's carnal as hell. And then she end up losing respect for him. She out here sleeping with someone else. But sisters, um, Colossians, the third chapter, verse 18 says, Wives. Submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. As unto the Lord. So you're supposed to submit yourself unto your husband as you would Christ. 
Do you understand how powerful that is, Brother Eliezer? Mm -hmm. Now, how many women out here doing that? They but they don't think it's necessary, but they think that they're serving the Most High. See, they, the, they claim to be lovers of Christ, but they're not doing what this book say. How do you think the Most High is moving with you if you're not doing what this book says? God. That's, that's the truth right there. And one of the problems is, um, if you read a little bit of history, and then you just see things around you today is the image of the so-called black and Latino native man had been destroyed to a point where his own woman can't view him in a, re a respect to put him in his proper place. So this is what's going on here. It's something going on in her head. So until you she readjusts her head in a way that she view him, she can't imagine him being Christ because a lot of them got Caesar or Bolger in their mind. And they want that black man or Hispanic man to be Caesar Bolger, and he's not. He can never be a white man. You see what I'm saying? So the scriptures talk about how much a man love his wife, and it also tells you what the brother just said, how because of his love, it can turn him down a, a wicked path. When you go into, when you go into, and that's that's a weak brother. That's a brother that get weak for his wife. He's supposed to stand strong and say, "No, I'm standing on the Most High." And what a lot of brothers don't realize is they gotta improve their faith, brothers. We gotta improve our faith because we think that we stand alone. This is the problem. We think when we stand on the scriptures. Do we forget the Most High is with us? It's not just our own authority. The Most High gave us that authority. See, when you submit to your authority, right, that, that authority that's over you assists you. That's, the, that's how it works. When your children submit to your rules and regulation and, and deal with you the way they're supposed to, you support them in whatever they're doing. You see what I'm saying? And 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 the wife, when she does the same with her husband, that husband got her back. That bro that husband is going to break his neck to protect and provide. You see? And it's the same way with the Most High. So you brothers got to stand up and say, no, sister, this is wrong. We're going to do what the Most High say, and that's it. Now, this is what it says in First um, Ezra of the Apocrypha. First Ezra of the Apocrypha. And I'm going to start at, um, it's chapter 4, I'm going to start at verse 25. Therefore, wherefore a man loveth his wife better than father or mother. Yea, many there be that have run out of their wits for women and have become servants for their sake. So these these you have become a servant for their sake. So that's twofold. You you could that you could read that like you have become her servant, and you can read that like she putting you in a, in crazy debt. So now you everybody else servant because that happens a lot also. You know you got some women that are real flashy and I want this and you know brothers fall for it. Don't fall for it. You stand up and be a man. You make your decisions. And you live with them. It said, yet many there be that run out of their wits for, for women and become servants for, for their sake. It says, many also have perished and have erred and have sinned for women. That's the average man. That's the average there you go. Man. There you go. That's the average nigga. There you go. You got to stand on these scriptures, man. The spirit got you, man. The spirit got you. And people don't realize how the spirit work. Either that spirit going to change that woman and make her suitable for you to accomplish your goals and uplifting the kingdom of the most high in this people. If she ain't built for that, the spirit going to move her right up out the way. And you better off that way. Let me just say this. I'm, I'm going to say this to you, brother. And this might hurt your feelings, you know. If you are one of those men out there that, you know, these scriptures are cutting right now, the Most High can't use you, man. If you are allowing a woman to rule over you and you're in submission, you know, she's doing something wrong, you won't say nothing because you're trying to prevent an argument, you don't want to argue in the home, the Most High can't use you, man. The Most High is not dealing with no weak man like that, man. Um, you know, sisters, again, um, I'm, I'm going to take it back to the scriptures again, um, First Peter, Peter's, the third chapter, verse one, it says, likewise, ye wives, be in subjection. 
Brother Eliezer, why is the scriptures keep saying over and over and over and again, telling the wife to submit to a husband, but 99% of the women out here not doing this? Why is that? You got to think, because these are women that supposed to be um, so-called God-fearing women. They go to these churches. Apparently, the churches is not moving with the spirit of truth. So, likewise, you wives, submit, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if they obey not the word, they may be one with your chaste conversation. That means you're supposed to be meek. Your conversation is supposed to be of a good source. Let's go to, um, based on what the brother Eliezer was saying, let's go to the, Genesis, the 18th chapter, and read verse 19. Um, because Abraham, he ruled this house. Sarah didn't rule Abraham's house. He ruled his own house. And as a man, you're supposed to be in control of your home. That doesn't mean dictatorship, but it does mean that as the man, you are supposed to be the authority of that home. And in the older days, you know, of my grandparents and all, I saw that. But that's a rare thing in this day and age, man. You don't really see that. Um, sisters, you know, um, you know, you get out of control. Brothers have been taught that it's wrong to live like that. Right. Man can't tell me nothing. And you can't tell me nothing. And they've been taught that if you're not living under 50-50, then you are somehow abusing her. Con. You're abusing her. You're mistreating her. If you say, no, I'm leaving this household, this the road we're going to go, and I'm putting my foot down on the map. Yeah, that's that's you mistreating her. This is the, the falsehood that they feed. Well, Genesis 18, verse 19 says, For I know him, that he will command his children. That's what the man's supposed to do. And his household. He's supposed to command that household, brother. You got to sit that house in order. And he will command his household after him. And they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment, that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken of him. So, brother, command that household. And I'm going to say this to you, sisters. All you sisters out there that think that, you know, the most high, you know, oh, yeah, no God's working with me, and I got my crystals over here, I'm going to hit you with something. You're going to have to get with a man in the last days because the most high is dealing with the men. The Most High lets you know that he's dealing with the men, that the flock of his pasture are the men. And I'm, You're going to have to get with a man in these last days, sisters, and not just any man, but a righteous, God-fearing man. Let me get the book of Isaiah, the 32nd chapter. Um, uh, and, uh, all right. Verse um, 1 and 2. Um, uh, I'll let you bring that out first. Yeah. Yeah, what the brother said is true. Abraham, he commanded his household, and the Most High knew that. That didn't upset the Most High that he wasn't living 50-50. That's the reason he chose them, because he was living according to the Spirit. Now, when we go to Second Ezra of the Apocrypha, chapter 14, verse 13 and 14, Now, therefore, set thy house in order. And reprove thy people, comfort such of them as be in trouble, and now renounce corruption. You're supposed to renounce corruption. And let go the mortal thoughts. Cast away the burdens of men. Put off now the weak nature. So that's for the for the brothers. This is what the Most High got to say. Put off that weak nature. Uh, 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 get rid of mortal thoughts. You know, stand up and be a man. It said, reprove, correct, and renounce correct, uh, 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 corruption. Set thy house in order. That's your responsibility. And for the sisters, when you go down to verse, uh, and this can apply for either one. 34. Therefore, if there, if, therefore, if so be that ye will subdue your own understanding, because that's the problem. They feel like, you know, I know it all. You know, you can't tell me anything. I already know everything. It said, and reform your heart. Change your heart. Change your mind. Ye shall be kept alive, and after death ye shall obtain 
mercy. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm continuing on um, with the word. Um, so the book of Isaiah. So sister, I, I, you know, I made a bold statement saying you're gonna have to get with a man if you want salvation. And I know you're thinking, nah, what the heck this nigga talking about? I saved myself. But well, let's see according to prophecy. Um, book of Isaiah 32, verse 1. Behold, a king shall range in righteousness. Who's that king? That's Yahweh Shah. This is talking about his second coming. And a prince shall rule in judgment. And a man, a man, not a woman, a man shall be a hiding place from the wind. And a covert from the tempest. What is a tempest LA is on? It's like a tornado. It's like a hurricane. It's a very strong storm. What tempest is it talking about? It's talking about thermal nuclear destruction that's coming with that third world war. So a man, not just any man, it's going to be a righteous man that's going to be a hiding place from the tempest, from the destruction and the wind. And a covert from the tempest as a river of water in a dry place. Now, Brother Eliezer, you know if someone's out in the Mojave Desert, like in California or in Arizona out in that desert, in the summertime when it's 120 degrees, man, you a, a glass of water is like, you know, a dream, man. It says, you know, a man's going to be like a river in a dry place. Like a man's going to be like a river in a desert as the shadow of a great rock in a weary land. So we go over to the book of Isaiah, the 33rd chapter, verse 6. It says, And wisdom shall be the stability of the times, and wisdom and knowledge, Salakia, and wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of that time. That's what's going to keep people stable. But what is knowledge? Malachi 2 verse 7 tells us what's knowledge. Let me get that real quick. It says, wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of the time. So where do we get knowledge from? That should be the questions. Malachi 2 verse 7. For the priest's lips, for the Kahan's lips, for the priest's lips shall keep knowledge and they shall seek the law at his mouth. That's the man right there. That's it. That's it right there. That's it right there. That priest. Keeping that knowledge. Keeping the knowledge, man. So sisters, you're gonna have to get with a man. I'm, I'm gonna get one more, brother. I'm gonna let you um continue on with something. I'm gonna get um Ezekiel, the 34th chapter, verse 31. So sisters, you're gonna have to get with a man. No matter how righteous you think you are, you're gonna have to get with a man because a righteous man is gonna be like a hiding place. So the book of Ezekiel, chapter 34, verse 31, to further prove this. Let's see who's the most high is dealing with. Is he dealing with the prophetess out there, brother Elias? Are these women that's running around with crystals? The women that, oh, yeah, um, what's your son, Taz Adop? I believe in astrology. Oh, yeah, yeah, we're not compatible. Man, that's a witchcraft, man. Uh, you're living your whole life around it. Come on. That's the, that's the witchcraft. Book of Ezekiel, chapter 34, verse 31. And ye, my flock, let's see who the Most High is dealing with. The flock of my pastor are men. Are men. Are men. And I am your power, saith the Lord Yahweh. So the Most High, so he's dealing with the man. Sister, you're going to have to get with a man. Uh, there's certain, there's certain jobs and um, positions that the most high just dealing with men with women they have their place you know but then there are certain places where where women are not included certain tasks that is just supposed to be men doing it right. um you know you have the order you have the order in the and the most high gave us the order now it's time for us to 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 do away with the the teachings that we learned in babylon that teaches us to go against those orders. You know, um, astrology and, and doing all these things, these things cannot save us. The scriptures tell us to stay away from worshiping idols and the sun and the moon and all these things. And that's what it, that's what it all goes back to. It all goes back to the worship. Um, most of the time, when you talk to these people, when you go into like a, 
like uh, the tarot card reading and all of this. These are the questions that they ask you. They ask you, what's your birth date? They ask you, what's your sign? Was you born in a day? Was you born in a night? And then uh, from the information that you give, they try to predict something for you. And they work their witchcraft and they talk to their spirits. And they create potions, some of them. Um, but the Most High actually have a purpose for the sun, moon, and the star. And he didn't mention nothing about um, using it for astrology and determining whether or not you should live your whole life based on the sun, moon, and the stars. When you go to Genesis, uh, when you go to Genesis chapter 1, verse 14, it says, And the Most High said, Let there be lights in the firmament. Of the heavens to divide the day from the night. So this is what the sun and the moon is for. It said let them be for signs. You see what I'm saying? Like where the, the prophecies talk about the moon turning into blood. And the stars of the heaven falling out the sky. And the sun darkening. Those are signs. This is what they're for. Let, let them be for signs. And for seasons. For days. And for years, and let them be for lights in the firmament of the heavens to give light upon the earth. This is what they're for. And it was so. And the Most High made two great lights. The greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. And the Most High set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. This is why he did it. And to rule over the day and the other the night and to divide the, the light from the darkness and the Most High saw that it was good. That's the good way of using it. That's the way that that's the way you're using it. You're supposed to use it to the, the time determine the signs and the prophecies that the prophet spoke about. You're supposed to use it to determine the days, the, the nights, and the days, and the years, and the months. And they're used for lights to be upon the earth. This is what they're used for. But when you take it out of, of what it's made for, this is when it's the opposite of good. This is when you're using it for evil. So you got something, brother, you're trying to get... Yeah, yeah. So yeah, um, uh, you know w when this word comes out, man, uh, a lot of people don't want to hear it, and, and and a lot of sisters, brother, um, they'll tell you, oh, can you explain it without using the Bible? You assure them in the Bible, man, they don't want to see it. They swear that the Most High is moving with them until you show them these scriptures in the Bible, like we're doing now. And you know why? Because this Bible it cuts deep. It's not like a man explaining it in his own words, because this is actually given by the inspiration of the Most High. It's not of any personal interpretation, man. It's not inspired by any one man. So the book of Hebrews 4 verse 12 says, for the word of Yahweh is quick and powerful and sharp, sharper than a two-edged sword, piercing even divided asunder of the soul. So this word cuts deep to the soul. That's why even in these secure party creditor videos I do, the guy said, man, how's it how can you be so damn intelligent? Um, you know all this stuff about law and you still believe in that fairy tale book, the Bible. You know why? Because this book be cutting them deep to the soul, man. Even dividing asunder of the soul and spirit of the joints and marrow. So it cuts all the way down to the bone Marrow, man. It cuts all the way down to the bone marrow. And, you know, speaking on what the brother was saying, uh, you know, the witchcraft, the sorcery, the palm reading, the tarot cards, the crystals, all of that is of Satan. Oh, that's not of the most high, man. That's all of Satan. You're invoking other spirits. Now, the high priest did have a crystal yeah. on his breastplate. But you are not a high priest. Sisters, you're not a priest of the Most High. There is no such thing as a high priest um, female in the kingdom of Israel. A high priestess. 
Right. So you're not supposed to be dealing with these crystals. Look, I'm, I'm going to show you how Saul, King Saul, went off by dealing with this um, freaking witchcraft on Book of um, First Chronicles um, 10, verse 13. So Saul, Saul died for his transgressions, which he committed against the Lord, even against the word of the Lord, which he kept not. So he stopped keeping the word of the Most High and also asked him for counsel of one that had familiar spirits. You know what a familiar spirit is, man? That's a spirit that he's calling, you know, someone that he knew. Like right, know. right. That it looked like someone that he knew. He's trying to call them back from the dead, man. Mm -hmm. So he went to this um, woman that could actually invoke familiar spirits to inquire of it. Then we read um, 1 Samuel um, 15, 23. For all of you that want to rebel against the, the scriptures as they're coming out, sisters... 1 Samuel 15, 23 says, For rebellion is like the sin of witchcraft, meaning divination, and arrogance like the evil of idolatry. The second Chronicles 33 and 6 says, And he calls his children to pass through the fire in the valley of the son of Hinnon. Also, he observed times. That, that's the people that try and go to someone and look into the future. Look into a damn crystal ball. Have people telling you about the future and so on and so forth. And use enchantment and use witchcraft and dealt with familiar spirits and wizards. He wrought much evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. So all of this stuff is of the de of the devil. What was you about to say, brother? Yeah. Um, and concerning the breastplate of the priest, they are giving clear instructions on how to use those stones. They're not praying to the stones. Right. You know what I mean? They're not going into no sorcery, no witchcraft. They got a set time, date, and area that they must go to and perform their priestly duties with the um with the stones. Right. You see what I'm saying? That ain't no uh, worship of a stone. That ain't no talking like, if I don't have the stone, I can't get to the most high. Nobody in Israel was saying these things, you know. It was the priest, the high priest's job to go and do a, a particular service, and he was given those stones to do that. So, yes, there's energies and stuff, but the problem is how are you using them? Are you using it for, for wickedness and you're taking what the Most High made for good, like the sun, moon, and stars, and you flipping it and perverting it, and you're taking what was good and you're making it wicked? So, here's a, here's a scripture from Leviticus 19 um, and verse, verse 26. It said, ye shall not. Now, this is directly connected to the witchcraft and sorcery. Ye shall not eat anything with the blood. Neither shall you use and neither shall ye use enchantments nor observe times so a lot of people don't know but when these witches do what they do they gotta drink a lot of blood and stuff like that they gotta kill cats and drink their blood and put this animal's blood in it and some of them human blood and they, that's how they get them demons inside of them so they can do their their magic and their witchcraft but it said ye shall not eat you shall not eat anything with the blood, neither shall you use enchantment, nor observe the times. Now, when you drop down a few more verses, yep, to the verse 31, it says, Regard not them that have familiar spirits, neither seek after wizards. So you're not supposed to go looking for no fortune teller because right, yeah, they right, say, right. yeah, well, I'm not doing it. I'm right. just I'm just going to see them. You're not supposed to be going to see them. It said, regard not them that have familiar spirits, neither seek after wizards to be defiled by them. I am Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahweh. So 
that's what the scriptures say concerning that matter, man. You ain't supposed to be going to no fortune tellers. You ain't supposed to be trying to do no palm reading. And you ain't supposed to be trying to get your palm read. So when you see Israelites saying, no, I don't, I'm not putting my hand out. No, I don't want to give you uh, 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 my birthday. It's because we don't want to be involved in those practices. You, We don't want to be forced in a position to be involved in those practices. And we're defiled by... By becoming a part of your ceremony. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to read another scripture real quick. In, in Jeremiah uh, chapter 10 verse 1. It says, Hear ye the word which Yahweh speaketh unto you. O house of Israel. Thus says Yahweh. Learn not the way of the heathen. These the other nations. And be not dismayed. At the signs of heaven. So that's you looking up into these signs, right? Astrological signs. Yeah, you looking at these these the these um yeah, these signs that. that you're getting from the sun, moon, and the star that's in the heavens, and you dismayed at them. For the heathens are dismayed at them. The Moors are big on that, brother. It said the heathens are dismayed at them. It said, For the customs of the people are vain. Vanity. So you're doing this for nothing. That's what that means, vain for nothing. So I just wanted to touch on that. You worshiping the sun, moon, and stars, you believing that these powers or these these forces is the is the true source of everything, that's falsehood. That's lies. It's vain. Because the most high created them and he didn't create them for the things that you're trying to use them for. He created them to be a light upon the earth to divide the day from, from the night, to divide the days, the months, the years. That's what he created them for. And that's how you use it for good. Anything else, you're going off. But go ahead, brother. Uh, come, come, continue on with the word of the most high. So, yeah, um, you know, People that, you know, um, deal with these crystals, right, brother? Now, some of these people, you know, that deal with them, they say that the crystals and gemstones are like people. And each one is unique. And, it, you know, it, it actually extrudes like a specific energy. It says a crystal or a gemstone may be used for healing, for magic, for spell casting, to inspire, to uplift balance, calm, and energize. Stones can actually enhance learning, alleviate stress, balance energy fills in your home. Now, none of this is done through the spirit of the Most High, um, unless they're doing what the Most High says. Um, right, right, to do with those stones. Um, it, it could actually promote lucid dreaming. Crystal energy can assist you in any area in your, see, you can see why a lot of them are attracted to it in your life for any reason. Each crystal or gem has a multitude of uses, and it will choose you. Now, how the hell is a crystal going to choose you, man? They should have stopped the madness right there. Yeah, that's the spirit right there. It says it will choose you, not the other way around. When purchasing a crystal or a gemstone, there will always be one that stands out from the rest. So it's telling you, you know, the one that you're attracted to, that's the one you're supposed to get. You will be attracted to the stone and be compelled. The word compelled means force to take it home with you. And that's what a lot of these women, are, that's what a lot of these Eves are doing, man. The crystal or gemstone that comes to you will be the one you need at that particular moment in your life. Now, that is wicked, man. And it goes on to say many ancient cultures believe that stones contain a life force and use them to conduct rituals for healing. It is believed that the lost city of Atlantis used crystals' powers extensively. Stones have also played an integral role in various religions. The most ancient jewelry was actually found in Queen Papa tomb um, in Samaria, and so on and so forth. It is not necessary for any person to possess specific abilities to work with crystals or gems. All you need is intentions and desire to perform particular types of magic. And the Most High tells you to stay away from magic. So let's say according to the Bible, what's going to happen to you if you're participating in this madness and you think you're of the Most High? Book of Leviticus 20 verse 6. And the soul that turneth after such 
as how familiar spirits and at the wizards, these people teaching you this madness about crystals to go a horn after them. I will even set my face against that soul and will cut him off from among his people. Sanctify yourselves, meaning set yourself apart. Therefore, and be ye holy. The word holy means set apart. For I, the Lord, Yahweh, am holy. Yeah, I want to um, touch on the um, the mixture, how people, uh, you know, they they say the most high is with them. The women will say the most high is with them, but they can't have the most high and the, um, you know, the, the spell casting. They can have them both. You know, I, when I was growing up, you know, in my issue, family used to talk about roots. Don't be, be careful. Some of these women are crazy. They'll be doing stuff to your food, put a root on you, right? So Israel, you know, this this is out here. You know, and it's being treated like it's being treated like you can have them both. You can be a Christian. You can you can follow the most high. This is what they thinking and be putting roots on people at the same time. When you go into what happened to the northern kingdom of Israel in second Kings chapter 17, where it basically tell you everything that went down. Um, You see that the most high destroyed Israel because of their rebellion. Because they wanted to worship these false gods. And when the enemy came in, Assyria destroyed the northern kingdom and placed all these other different nations in in the um in Samaria, the capital. It says, so they this is um first this is second Kings chapter seventeen, verse thirty two. It says, So they feared Yahweh and made unto themselves of the lowest of them priests to the high places so they took the most nothing brothers and said we're going to make them priests it said with sacrifice for them in the houses of the high places they feared Yahweh and served their own gods after the manner of the nations whom they carried away from thence so they wanted to do both unto this day they do after the former manners they fear not Yahweh, neither do they after their statues, it said, or after their ordinances, or after the laws and commandments which Yahweh commanded the children of, of Jacob, whom he named Israel, which whom Yahweh had made a covenant and charged them, saying, Ye shall not fear other gods, nor bow yourselves to them, I mean serve them nor serve them, there you go, nor sacrifice to them, but Yahweh who brought you up out of the land of Egypt with great power and scratched out arm, him shall ye fear and him shall ye worship. To him shall ye do sacrifice and the statues and the ordinances and the laws and the commandments which he wrote for you, ye shall observe to do for for forevermore and ye shall not fear other gods you're not supposed to be going by their laws and their rules and their statues and the covenant and and the covenant that i have made with you ye shall not forget neither shall ye fear other gods but yahweh your allah or god ye shall fear and he shall deliver you out of the hands of your enemies how be it they did not hearken but they did after their former manner and these nations and and these nations feared yahweh and served their graven images both their children and their children's children as did their fathers so did they unto this day so that's what was going on with the northern kingdom come on come on come on, come on. they wanted to do both yeah, so, you know, and w when we read in the book of Acts, you know, it talks about a man named Simon, you know, that dealt with sorcery. And he had all of the people deceived, like a lot of these sisters, you know, they get their crystals and they all, and they got a lot of brothers deceived, man. A lot of men literally think these women are of the most high. So, you know, the book of Acts 8 verse 9 says, but there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery. So he was dealing with this foolishness and bewitched the people. 
So he he had spells on the people. He bewitched them. He deceived them. Um, of Samaria, giving out himself as some great one. So they thought that this man was great because he was working these miracles through the spirits of demons and sorcery to whom they all gave heed, meaning they all listened to him, from the least to the greatest. So, you know, all kind of people was listening to him. From the least to the greatest. You know, he's listening to this man saying, this man is the great power of God. So they was worshiping this man as God, man. <laughs> and to him they regard because that of long time he had bewitched them with sorcery. So they listened to this man for a very long time because he was bewitching them with sorceries. And sisters, a lot of you are doing this to your man. You know, you, I mean, you, you really got some of these brothers under um, spells, but the Most High is going to judge you for that, sis. So you need to come back here, learn your nationality, and learn this truth. We'll go to the book of Isaiah, the 47th chapter, verse 8 through 14. It's talking about this sorcery, this witchcraft, all of this. It says, now, then listen, you lover of pleasure. Because a lot of women, you know, because... The, the, the punishment of the Most High don't come speedily. They say, oh, I know the Most High is worth me. Nothing bad is going to happen to me. Sometimes the Most High gets you through your children. Some some of these women, uh, Brother Elias, the Most High seal their wound up. They can't even have children. And they don't understand that's judgment. They don't understand that's a curse. Some of you, the Most High is taking your child away from you and giving it to the husband. And you still can't see that that's a curse from the Most High. Why? You need to get your minds right, sis. That's judgment. You, you think that's just happened by chance? No, that's judgment. That's judgment of the Most High. Some of your children don't even love you. Why? Judgment. Book of Isaiah 47, verse 8. Let's see if we can find it in the scriptures. Now then, listen. You love her a pleasure. Because a lot of these Negroes, they love pleasure, man. They love her for JJ. Lounging in your securities. Oh, yeah, I got a nice job. I'm working for Esau. I work in corporate America. Lounging in your securities. And saying to yourself, I am. And there is none besides me. Oh, you the man. Oh, it's just to say, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm the most beautiful woman out here. You know? I, I was talking about that woman in the, bus, <laughs> in the bus, you know, stop a little while ago, man. Just looking for a fight. Like Dana White. Looking for a fight. <laughs> I will never be a widow or suffer the loss of children. But this is coming to pass. Now you, some of you have already suffered loss of children. You've had miscarriage. Or the most, I just literally took your children away from you. And someone else have them. Or the, or, or the father has them. Both of these will overtake you in a moment on a single day. So the Most High said, this, is gonna, this could just come to you in a moment of time. On a single day. When you think everything's fine, judgment could come to you. Loss of children and widowhood. And you could lose your husband. They will come upon you in full measure in spite of many sorceries. Because a lot of you believe in sorceries and your witchcraft is getting you a lot of the things that you accomplish. You have trusted in wickedness and have said, no one sees me. Because a lot of these sisters say, oh, no one can see me. Some of you sisters, uh, he was saying, what you say the sister say in the bus stop, brother? I, I, I'm married, I got a boyfriend, and I got a sugar dad. <laughs> what she say? And, 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 what, what she, I got a husband, a boyfriend, and a Hey, but what, you, what she thinking about, what you think she's saying about those three? No one can see me. Like the scriptures are saying, huh? none of them can see her, you know? No one can see me. Your wisdom and knowledge mislead you. But the scripture is saying your wisdom and knowledge mislead you when you say to yourself, I am and there is none besides me. Disaster will come upon you and you will not know how to conquer, conjure it away. A calamity will fall upon you that you cannot ward off with a ransom. Um, catast catastrophe you cannot foresee will suddenly come upon you keep on then with your magic spells and with your many sorceries will you cause terror so you're gonna bring terror upon yourself from all of this stuff all the counsel you have received has only worn you out let 
your astrologers, the scripture is telling you about it, man. Let your astrologers come forward. <laughs> you know, most I said, let you. So, all these people that believe in, in your astrological signs and all of that, the most I said, let them come forward and say they can't do nothing. They can't do nothing. They're not going to be do nothing. The most I said, let your astrologers come forward who make predictions month by month. Let them come forward. Let them save you from what is coming upon you. What are we reading? We're reading the Bible. Isaiah 48. I mean, 47, Salakia, chapter 47, verse 8 through 14. Let it come upon, let these people that you're believing in come and save you. You're not going to be able to do it. So you got to come out of this world. If you want to be saved, if, if, if you want to be saved, you need to take this vibration back with you from this video and you need to come out of this world. If you're listening to this video right now, it's not by chance that you're listening to this video. You clicked on this video for a reason because the Most High wants you to hear this message and the Most High is causing is calling you to come out of this world. So you need to come out of this world. You're not supposed to be of this world. It tells you in the book of um, James 4 verse 4, friendship of the world is enmity with the Most High. So if you're listening to this message right now, you need to come out of this world. And you know, people that's going to hate you, Sure, there's going to be many people that dislike you when you're trying to follow this truth. But Yahweh Christ said, it's him that they really hate. When you try and tell someone about this word, Brother Eleazar, and they get all um, belligerent and, and defensive, and they feel like they hate you, and they'll flip you, they're flipping around on you, say, why you hate me? Why you hate me because I'm a strong woman? Why you hate me because I'm such a strong woman? No. You hate the most high. You say you love Christ, but you hate him. Yeah. The book of John 7, verse 7. The world cannot hate you, but me have hated. This is Yahweh shot. This is Christ talking. Because I testify of it that the works thereof is evil. Let me go over to John 15, verse 19. See if we can find any other thing like that. See, Brother Eliezer, men like you and myself, we're not of this world. Mm -hmm. And when I say that, People think I'm crazy. Hey, what's wrong with Taz Adar? He's a what the hell are you he talking about? He's not of this world. Is he from another planet? I, I didn't say it. I'm just repeating what the Lord says. The Lord said that. Book of John, 15, verse 19. If you were of the world, the world will love his own. So they would love us, Eliezer. If we was out here sinning, you know, you know, going and smacking her on her uh, her booty, you know, watching out where she pop a coochie, drinking Alize, Hennessy, you know what I mean? Uh -huh. The world will love us then, cause we're in the Satan spell. But because you're not of the world, I have chosen you out of the world. Therefore, the world hated you. So this is why, you know, many of you don't like us. You don't like us right now. You hate me right now, and you hate Brother Eliezer right now because these scriptures are cutting you. You hate me right now. You, you don't like the way this word is coming out. Con, and um, in Psalms, um, in Psalms 96, I'm going to start at verse 3. Psalms 96, verse 3. Declare his glory among the heathen, his wonders among all people for Yahweh is great and greatly to be praised he is to be feared above all gods for all the gods of the nations are idols but Yahweh made the heavens so Yahweh is the creator they just idols that you that you plan with there you see what I'm saying they just spirits that's playing with you and going to leave you messed up in the end. Because you ain't going to never be able to deal with the true creator until you get rid of the phony, the fake ones. The scripture says in 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 5 and 6, it says, For though there be, for though there be that are called gods, whether in heaven or or in earth, as there be gods many and lords many, 
But to us, there is but one Allah Hayyam, the Father of whom are all things, and we in him, and one master, Yahweh Shah Hamashiach, who the world called Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we by him. So we who are in the truth, we acknowledge Yahweh, the Father, and we give honor unto his son, Yahweh Shah. Some people call him Yeshua, Yehoshua. A lot of the world call him Jesus. This is talking about the same person. These are the these are the the people you should honor and serve. You should honor the Most High. You should honor His Son. This is how you stay on the righteous path. You don't honor Buddha. You don't honor uh, whatever else false god that you have out there, because you have a whole lot of them. That's why I said that there are gods. There are many. There's lords. There are many. But we acknowledge the one true Most High. Yeah, they love Dorothy. Con. And so I'm going to go to Deuteronomy We're going to go to Deuteronomy chapter 4 Because it's not a crystal That you're supposed to be worshipping It's not no crystals It's not a person either Let's see This is Deuteronomy 4 um, chapter 4 Let's start at verse 12 It says that Yahweh Spake unto you out of the midst Of the fire Ye heard the voice of the words But saw no Similitude you ain't see no form No shape you ain't see no crystal You ain't see no animal It said only ye heard A voice He said that's the one who created all of this that you see That's the one and he declared unto you his covenant, which he commanded you to perform, even ten commandments. And he wrote them upon two tables of stone. And Yahweh commanded me at that time to teach you statutes and judgments, that ye might do them in the land whither ye go over to possess it. Take ye therefore good heed unto yourselves. Pay attention to yourself what you're doing. Take ye therefore good heed unto yourselves, for ye saw no manner of similitude. That same force that created everything, you ain't see no solid object. You heard a voice. On the day that Yahweh spake unto you in, in, in Horeb, out of the midst of the fire, lest ye corrupt yourselves. See, that's, the, that's what happened with the natives. They started worshiping the fire and stuff. You see what I'm saying? But he wasn't the fire. He was using the fire. He wasn't the fire. He was the voice. It's telling you he was the voice. It says, out of the midst of the fire, lest ye corrupt yourselves and make you a, a graven image. So you're trying to make images and stuff and say that this is the most high. The similitude of any figure and the likeness of man or female. So if you create a statue or image or something, you start worshiping it, a man or a woman, you're going off. The likeness of any beast that is on the earth. The likeness of any winged fowl that flyeth in the air. The likeness of anything that creepeth upon the ground. The likeness of any fish that is in the waters beneath the earth. And lest thou lift up thine eyes unto the heavens. Here we go. Now you're looking at the sky. You done, you done made idols out of everything on the ground. You done made idols out of birds, bugs, fish, each other, man, woman. Lest ye look up your eyes unto the heaven, unto heaven, and when thou seest the sun and the moon and the stars, even all the hosts of heavens, should have be driven to worship them and serve them, which Yahweh thy Allahim has divided unto all nations under the heaven. So he said, Don't do that. You see the sun, you see the moon, you see the stars. They are lights for all the nations. 
He said you're not supposed to worship him. Go ahead. Yeah, so our people, you know, they hate they hate light and they love darkness. And that's manifest in the scriptures. You, you, you hate light because what we're giving you right now is light. But you still want to live in darkness. You want to follow Satan on the left-hand side. Um, scriptures say in the book of um, John, um, third chapter, verse 19, and it says, This is the condemnation, that light is cometh into the world. And men love darkness rather than light because <clears throat> their deeds were evil. Same thing today, man. Prophecy fulfilling itself over and again. <clears throat> first John, <clears throat> the fourth chapter, verse five and six. They are of the world. Now, this is why you want to follow the world, because you're of the world. And we're not of this world. They are of the world, therefore, they speak of the world. So the things you do are worldly. Everybody talking about the Super Bowl yesterday. I get so excited to see that. Why? Because you're of the world. Worldly. And the world heareth them. And they can hear you. Oh, yeah, man. Y'all, y'all, yo, man. I just got me a new, um, you know, um, BMW, man, off of the showroom floor. Because you of the world. Yeah, man. I'm going to get me, um, Gucci this, Fendi that. Um, you know, um, Tom Ford this. Because you're of the world. We are of God, Yahweh. He that knoweth God, heareth us. If you're not receiving this message, guess what? It's because you're not of God. You don't know the Most High. That's why you're not receiving this message right now. He that is of God, heareth us. He that is not of God, not us. You won't hear us. You won't hear this. Hereby, no we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. So we know when you're going off and we know when you're right. We know the spirit of truth and we know the spirit of error. And many of you sisters, you're going off. Not all of you, just 99.9% of you. Not all of you, just 99.9% .9 of you, man. Hey, hey, the, the, the wisest, and hey, you laughing out, but the wisest man in the Bible said you know um you know he looked and looked and he couldn't find one righteous woman man uh, one righteous woman to lead the congregation, to lead the congregation. He, didn't find one. he didn't find one and he said to lead the congregation he said out of a thousand he only right. found one righteous brother one. So that also show you that men are off it's all most of the men, men are off too he telling you that, you know what I mean? So, to the brothers, you know, who you know you got a righteous woman, you know, because sometimes it, it hit the sisters, and they don't, it don't hit the brothers. Right, 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 and the sisters is, see, that's why he read Peter's. Um, that's why he read Peter's. But to you brothers, whom she may be sharing this video with, you need to get your spirit right, man, so that you can have peace in your home. She's not going to give up the most high, the creator of heaven and earth, just because you want to keep being whatever you're doing, whatever you're into. It says, likewise, in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 1, likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may be without the word, be one through the conversation of the wives or the conduct of the wives. So the wives can conduct themselves in righteousness so much so that it sparks the curiosity of her man. Like, man, this this book got her respecting me more. This book got her, you know, not doing the things she used to do that wasn't conducive to our relationship. Let Maybe I should check out what's in this book. What What's my part? That this book say I should play because the things this book telling her to do for me is, is is just great. You know, it gives me peace. You know, my 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 house is organized because she's she's not watching TV all day and you know drama stuff. She's she's cleaning the house. She's keeping stuff in order. She's studied. She's quiet. She's um, 
You know, she's she's more ladylike. She dresses different. She don't dress provocative. He could see that light in you and it inspire him. It says that they may without word be won through the conversation of the wives while they yeah, while they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear. Fear what? Fear the most high. That means you have that high respect for the most high that is certain things you're not going to do. You're not going to get out of your place because you know what the most high says. Who's adorning, right, to make the thing that make you beautiful. That's what adorning means to make beautiful. Who's adorning, let it not be that outward adorning of the plaiting of the hair, meaning you so vain, you more worried about your hair do than your own walk with Christ, than your walk with the Most High. It said, of the wearing of gold or of the putting on of apparel. You worried about all this vain stuff that you're putting on your body, but you're not worried about the condition of your soul. It said, but let it be the hidden man of the heart and that which is not uh, corruptible, even the ornament of a, a, a meek and quiet spirit which is in the sight of the Most High of great price. So that's the thing that's going to win him over. That quiet and that meek spirit is going to intrigue him. And that's the thing that's going to make him say, man, let me, let me, if this Bible changed her life like that, and she's so much better for me as, as, as the wife that she's become, let me see what's in this Bible, and maybe I can become better for her because she's a good woman. This is what the Bible is teaching. Um, you say you got a script you want to share, brother? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got one. All right. Um, I wanna, I wanna get um, this, this particular, this particular doctrine that I've been hearing lately, and it's, it's, it's strange to hear it come from Israelites, because this particular doctrine, I wanna just cut real quick. Um, it's a Christian doctrine. It's an obvious Christian doctrine. And it's from a, a feminist um, vibe to it. The doctrine is basically this. It's impossible for a woman to sin or do wrong, you know, unless her, her husband teach her to do that. This is the doctrine, right? And I, I've heard uh, uh, too many Hebrews um, explain this to me. And that's from the Christian church. Um, that teaching. Now let's see what the scriptures say about that doctrine. The doctrine that it's impossible for a woman to be sinful. It's impossible for her to be wicked. It's impossible for her to be rebellious. Right? It's impossible for her to be these things unless her husband um, leads her into that. Let's see what the scriptures say concerning that. Now, when we go to First uh, Timothy's, First Timothy's um, two and thirteen and fourteen, right? It says, "For Adam was first formed, then Eve." So it's the husband and the wife, and Adam was not deceived. But the woman being deceived was in the transgression. So in this particular occasion, we see that the woman was first deceived. The woman was the one who broke the command. And then the man broke the command. So that doctrine that teach that it's impossible for a woman to sin unless the man sin first, that's a false doctrine. When you go into the book of Sirach or Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiasticus of the Apocrypha, if you go to chapter 25, verse uh, 24, listen what, listen what the man says here. Listen what the prophet says here in Ecclesiasticus chapter 25 and verse 24. Of the woman came the beginning of sin. And through her, we all die. So what is this showing us? This showing us that what? 
she could be the one that mess up first, and then she could drag him into messing up. But they teaching it in reverse. They're saying that, no, nah, it's impossible for her to mess up first. No, he got to mess up first. No. You have wicked women and you have wicked men. And both of them got to get their spirits right. Point blank, period. So, so both of y'all Israelites, men and women, check your spirit. The scripture said, examine yourself and see whether ye are of the faith. Know ye not yourselves? Check yourself, check your spirit, and see if it's lining up to this Bible. Yeah, yeah, I got it. I'm, I'm, I'm going to close out with this, brother. Um, this is a pretty long video. So I just want to say this, you know, um, many of you, you're carnally minded, man. You're not operating in the spiritual realm. You, you, you're, you want things that's tangible. Your focus is on something that's tangible. If you can't see it, it's not real to you. But you don't realize that everything that we're giving you is spiritual. So the scripture say in the book of Romans, um, 8th chapter, starting at verse 4. That the righteousness of the Lord might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. You're not supposed to be walking after, oh, he look good. Oh, she look good. You see that sister? Oh, she sure got a fat, she got an onion on her. That's carnal minded, man. And that's death. That's not after the spirit. They're not examining her. She might look good. They're not seeing if her, is she going to um, submit? Is this sister going to cover herself like the scriptures are saying, according to the thus saith the Lord? Or does she just want to flaunt her beauty to every man out here? Mm -hmm. Because if that's what you're getting, brother, that's you're getting yourself in some trouble. Peter was talking about. Yeah, that, that outer beauty. Right. And not that, 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 that inner man of the heart. Con. Mm -hmm. Verse 5. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death. Uh, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So this is dealing with people's spirit. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. That means you're the enemy of the most high. If you're carnally minded, you're chasing the things of this world. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he's none of his. How do you know if you have the spirit of Christ? Because you doing what he did. He said in John 14, verse 12, those of you that believe in me will do the works that I do, but greater works will you do than me mm -hmm. because I'm going to the Father. Huh. Because I'm going to the Father. So, I mean, that's all I got. You got another scripture, brother? Yeah, yeah. I think this will be a good scripture to, um, to end it on. This is in James um, chapter 4, verse 1. From whence cometh war and fighting. Why are y'all fighting and warring against each other? <laughs> From whence cometh war and fighting among you? Come they not, come they not hence, even of your lust, that war in your members, ye lust and ye have not, ye kill and ye desire to have and cannot obtain. Ye fight and war, yet ye have not, because ye ask not. Ye ask and ye receive not because ye ask amiss. Meaning you asking for stuff that don't matter. Just going to drive you deeper into your darkness. That ye may consume it upon your lust. Ye adulterers and adulteress. Know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God. It says whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is an enemy of God. Do ye think that the scriptures say in vain the spirit dwelleth in us lusteth to envy, but he giveth more grace? Therefore, wherefore he saith, God resist the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he shall flee from you. Draw nigh to God. And he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners. Purify your heart, ye double-minded. 
with that, we thank you. And we hope that the words that you that you've heard today from the Holy Scriptures will touch your hearts and create change in your lives, that your wisdom may be increased and that you know that we are your brothers and we're speaking out of love that we correct our people. And with that, we thank Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah Hamashiach. Hallelujah. Shalom.